Let's go. Hello and welcome back to another one of Paul's Beer Reviews. I hope you're doing well. Um, big beer time. Big beer time. Potential beer of the year contender already. I haven't even opened the can yet. We're going to Bristol for this one. And we are going to Left Handed Giant. And we're going to have this year's version of King of the Woodland. Their Imperial Stout coming in at 10.5% ABV. Now, last year, their version of King of the Woodland, I had as my beer of the year. Um, it's uh, Imperial Stout with pistachio and honeycomb. Last year, it was 12.5% ABV, so it's actually gone down 2% in alcohol this year. Hopefully, that won't affect it too much. But this beer last year was absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning and was... When, when I really thought about it, it was my beer of the year. <clears throat> so it's an annual release from Left Handed Giant, this beer. So here's the new can wrap. I love that. Really, really nice. I do like it. Slightly brighter than last year's version. Like I say, it has dropped in alcohol. So Imperial Stout, 10.5% ABV. Imperial Stout with pistachio and honeycomb. All hail the Owl King. Bigger, more indulgent. And luxurious than any other woodland creature there is true what well, i'll try read that again properly all hail the owl king bigger more indulgent and luxurious than any other woodland creature this is a truly regal treat contains barley oats and the rest of it's in foreign in foreign languages so i can't read it but there you go but like i say last year this was stunning absolutely stunning it was 12 and a half percent now it's 10 and a half percent not a big deal. Um, I understand this year they have uh, not they've not used lactose, um, so they wanted this to be uh, gluten free, vegan friendly, all that malarkey. Uh, but what they have done, they've replaced it with I think it's more addition of oats in the malt bill. Um, so I'm really excited about this beer because, like I say, last year it was absolutely stunning, and I could not wait for it to come out this year. So it came out last week. I um, ordered four cans because um, I'm selfish. <laughs> so let's get this beer open. Get it into a glass. Let's see what it's all about. It's another bloody cold day down here. Winter has returned. So it's perfect for a big imperial stout. Let's get a bit in there. <clears throat> Look at that. Jet black. Jet black, no red. Bleeding through that whatsoever. No head to speak of. Ten and a half percent stout. You can't really expect one. Give it a wriggle. I mean, it looks looks like oil, doesn't it? Looks like pure engine oil. Let's get me snout in. See the aroma's telling us. <sighs> Honeycomb. Dark chocolate. Black coffee. And it's nutty. I think I said the, the same thing about this last year. It's hard to kind of really decipher. Well, at least I can't decipher the difference between aroma and nuts. It smells like Nutella. Like boozy Nutella. <clears throat> We've added honeycomb. There is that sweet alcoholic touch to it. On the aroma, you can tell it's going to be big. <coughs> you can tell it's a boozy bum. It smells absolutely delicious. Let's get stuck in. Cheers. Whoa. Wow. Little beauty. Huh. That's great. That is great. Lovely, smooth, slightly creamy texture on them on the mouthfeel. It's boozy. You're getting that honey influence. It's like a, almost sort of a syrupy sweetness. 
not overly so. It's not sickly. Dark chocolate. Get you say, getting Nutella. Sort of a milky chocolate, a dark chocolate. There's a bit of fruit as well. It's like a dark fruit touch. I love the mouth for it, really. I feel like I'm going to need to brush my teeth after this beer. It's just clinging to everything. It's rich. It's roasty. It's sweet. It's creamy. It's absolutely wonderful. It really, really is good. Really tasty. Mm. I love that body. I love that mouthfeel. I love how it really takes over the palate. Coats it. It's a boozy sweetness now. It's like honey and alcohol. My flipping chair is sinking. I've got to get a new chair. Um, yeah, it is boozy. You are fully aware this is a 10.5% beer. Um, but despite that, it's very drinkable. I'm going to get the rest of this in here. Let's see how it behaves. One more wriggle. Look at that. Almost developed a head there. Developed a bit of a head that time. Excuse me. There's a bit more of a roasty, nutty elements now coming through on that aroma now that I've kind of chucked all of it in. Oh, this is a treat. It, it, this, weird, this is special. This is the fourth year they've done this now. It's the fourth year that, that uh, Left Handed Giant have brewed this beer. I only feel bad that I missed the first two. Because last year's was stunning. This is stunning. The drop off in the alcohol, the removal of lactose has done nothing to diminish this beer. This is genuinely world class. World class. When you think this is an annual release. And putty, Verdant's putty gets all the talk. It gets all the, all the fanfare, all the, all the sort of uh, the FOMO, the fear of missing out. People wanting putty. I'd have this over a can of putty any old day of the week. This is quite stunning. It is quite stunning, and it's one to savour. And I'm glad I got another couple of cans because when you review a beer, you, I think sometimes you're so busy talking about it, you don't quite relax enough and take it all in um this is just an extraordinary piece of brewing again from left-handed giant so the malt bill is fantastic the addition of the oats make it creamy thick really palate coating and there's a touch of sweetness from the honeycomb and it also gives us slightly dark fruit slightly resinous flavors Raisins, sultanas, bit of cherry, and then it's chocolate, and it's a combination of like dark chocolate or plain chocolate, or whatever you want to call it, like Bourneville, and then it's coffee, roastiness, roasted coffee, black coffee, dark coffee, and that oat, that oats uh, content in the malt bill, in the malt bill, it gives you that creamy body. Gives you the sort of the impression of like milk chocolate as well. And it is 10.5% and it does taste boozy, but it's not overly so. There is a balance to it. Look at the conditioning of it. Look at it. Look what it's doing. Look at that carbonation there chasing the head around and the colour of it. It's a worldie. It is an absolute worldie. It really is. Um, beginning of March now. Beginning of March. And I've already had two beers this year. And they were both Imperial Stouts. That I think will be 
come the end of the year, come Christmas, will be right up there in my sort of review of the year in terms of beers and probably going to be my, my, my beers of the year. Um, Pinter. Is it what is it called? Nothing more, Track and Pinter, that uh, chocolate and gingerbread stout. And this King of the Woodland, again, left-handed giant. There is something about drinking a really good Imperial Stout at the early stages of the year when it's cold, it just sticks with me. This is wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. It's delicious, it's one to savour. I really recommend everyone goes and gets one. They're not cheap, as you can imagine. I think I paid about 6 25 I think it worked out 6 25 a can from Left Handed Giant. Um, but when you drink it, you will know where that money's gone. It is wonderful. You won't get nothing like this in the supermarket, I promise you. That's quality, absolute quality. It's a, a 100 out of 10. It's an incredible beer. Again, like I say, the lack of lactose, the cut down in ABV has done nothing to diminish this beer. This is quite stunning. King of the Woodland, what a beer. What a beer, what a brewery. Um, I love it, I love it. Give, please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I really recommend everyone goes and get this beer. I'll put a link to the website in the description box below. Take care of yourselves, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Do appreciate it. Until my next one, you take care.